color is great after all. At least since the classic neck film simulation I've found that and I've made a lot more color photos than ever before. Therefore today in my small series of image quality settings let's take a short look at the color chrome effect and color chrome effect blue. For everyone who doesn't know me yet, my name is Jochen, I'm an amateur photographer from Düsseldorf, Germany and I mainly do street photography and portraits. Have a look at my Instagram feeds. Many of you have asked me to continue my little series on image quality settings for the newer Fujifilm cameras, especially for the X100V. But of course, all we will talk about today also applies to the X-Pro3, the X-T4 and the X-S10 and everything that will be announced soon, I guess. So today we will briefly talk about about the two color chrome settings. On the one hand we have the color chrome effect. I'll explain briefly what it does. The luminance is removed from the strongly saturated colors of an image in order to gain some texture on the other side. I could summarize, bright and lively colors are emphasized by more or less strong darkening. The same applies in principle to the other setting, the color chrome effects blue. Only that it is limited to the blue tones which can be used particularly well when taking pictures with blue skies for example. Here too reducing the luminance makes the textures or color gradations within the sky more visible again. Now you could of course adjust these settings inside your camera, take a picture, look at the JPEG, change the setting and so on. But Fujifilm offers the beautiful free XRAW studio where we can look directly at the effects with RAW files. Unfortunately the software cannot be changed to another language, the OS X system language is always used. Therefore you have have to get along with my German interface. I will not explain how the software works in general. If you want to know more about that, leave me a comment, then maybe I will make another video about it. But there is also a very good one by Fuji X photographer Kevin Mullins. I've already linked it here somewhere, but I'll do that again in the description. Well, now we are in the XRAW studio by Fujifilm and I selected an image to give you a general idea about the color chrome effect and the color chrome effect blue. This is a shot of some Lego as you see in my kids room. I have set all settings to zero in advance and first chose the Velvia film simulation because the colors pop out most with that one. Now have a look what happens to the colors if I set the the color chrome effect directly to strong. As you can see especially the red tones are darkened significantly but also with the yellows and greens the effect can be seen. I will give you a comparison by choosing off again so you can see the effect better. Everything except for the blue tones is affected by this. You should keep in mind that all film simulations render the colors differently and therefore the effects work differently. For example if I now select the classic neck film simulation which is called classic black in German here, I don't know what that nonsense is all about, it doesn't deliver these striking colors as Velvia and now we see that the setting now has lesser effect. I turn it off again and strong again so the effect is seen less even if it is there. Well you have to experiment with that a little bit since you have to connect your camera to use XRAW Studio anyway you can save these settings directly in the camera as a custom setting by the way. As I said before have a look at Kevin Marlin's video or leave me a comment I will make a video if you like to. Now I switch back to Velvia again. As I said the blue tones have so far been completely ignored by the normal color contrast, uh, color chrome effect, sorry. The separation also makes perfect sense otherwise you would always be influencing the sky. So if I now add the color chrome effect blue you can see that the same darkening as before with the other colors will now happen to the blue Legos, maybe even a little more, so maybe I would choose a weak effect here. But at least you should see what happened. Now that we have a general understanding about these settings, let's try out with other images. The next images I show you are really not great art and they come mostly from my rejected pictures, but I think they are particularly good for showing the effects. For example, this picture of these two sporty guys doing stretching exercises under a bridge. Now pay particular attention to the clothes and the graffitis on the walls. I now set the color chrome effect directly 
directly to strong again from off and then you see that especially the strongly saturated colors such as red and orange of the signs here are clearly darkened and thus emphasized. If I take weak of course the effect is not that strong again. Well this image is very well suited to show both effects here again first all the color chrome effect set to strong. The effect can of course be seen clearly on the red and orange tones but now I also use the color chrome effect blue and as you can see uh, this has effect on both the beautiful blue sky and his closing. Well one last image to show you the effect this man in front of a theater in Düsseldorf. If I now put the color chrome effect to strong of course the red tones of his clothes are darkened and if I now add some color chrome effects blue you will see that the sky will be darkened and this of course is working with everything you put in addition for example an emphasizing of the colors or if you darken the shadow tones a little bit. So these are some kinds of settings that I always use inside the camera but the Fuji X RAW Studio is a great place to try out your settings and save them as a custom setting. I hope that this short demonstration made the possibilities of both effects a little clearer to you. Both effects are another very good way to build the settings for your or JPEG straight out of the camera. As I said you have to take a look at which film simulations and in which situations you can do it best. In any case it is a good idea to even put these settings in the quick menu so that you can change them if needed. At least I love the options that the image quality settings on Fuji cameras offer us today. If you have any questions on these settings or any other topic feel free to write me in the comments. I usually answer within a few hours. Don't forget to give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Switch on the notifications so that you don't miss any more videos. If you find my content really helpful, consider buying me a coffee via buymeacoffee.com. The link can also be found in the description. That's it for today. I hope to see you soon. Take care of yourself. Have a good time. Ciao.